Get out my trusty driver. <laughs> now I figured I could either take the whole cab off or I could just go ahead and remove the top of the skull cab. <laughs> Give us full access to see inside the cabin. Now there is no um, uh, there is no interior kit. This was an all metal vehicle. Never did offer an interior kit uh, from what I saw. Let's just remove this. Full access to the top of the cranium. I'll give you a look inside. Wow. Look at that. 8400 3S LiPo uh, from Gen Zace I have here. It is a 25C discharge rate. Now, it's supposed to go right here. I could do that. I don't see why not. It definitely got, goes up over the uh, back engine compartment. Plus, it's putting weight right over the front tires. Still with the room up front. So I'm thinking what I can do is either I can attach the RX-8 on an angle. Right? It has that stickiness on the back from the packaging. I could put it like that. And then... The whole thing is, is that there's holes in the bottom here to get to the wires of the motor. So it would almost be smarter if I had these pins pointed down like that. The only issue is, is then I'm going to be able to see it through the cab. But is that really something I'm worried about? Not really. If I flip it forward, all the wires come out of the front of the uh, uh, motor compartment. Now, I need extensions pretty much to run it through the cab. Unless I ran the wires through the cab, that could be pretty easy. I could have put a receiver in the front, maybe behind here on the wall. Hmm, this is why these kind of kits take a little bit of time. Now the other thing is, is I noticed the windshield wipers on the front right here. They're so delicate. The, uh, the inside, the way they've engineered them is so thin, it's a very big challenge to keep everything working together. So at the moment, I'm not going to worry about the working windshield wipers. This is the hobby of the hobby for me. So I'm going to focus on mostly the power plant. Now, let's get this ESC out. We'll do some wiring. I think that's the best thing to do. Get the wires attached and then I'll be able to space everything out. Okay, uh, so in every build video, I've basically shown how to do soldering. I've also done tutorials of that on my channel. Uh, so I'm going to step over that for now because this is an advanced build and the advanced builders watching uh, are with me and we're going to move on to the next stage. I will mention this is, this ESC from Tekken, the RX-8 Gen 2, uh, has a limitless brushed motor category. So really, any turn of brushed motor you can run off of this and since I don't know the turn uh, of the brushed motor capo sent to me to use I think this is going to be an ideal choice so we might as well go ahead uh, I'll let you know that the way it's been set up this and this the positive and negative are to go to the motor and the middle two are to go to the actual battery let's put the truck back up on the bench and install it all right, so you can see the holes uh, through the window here of where those wires are supposed to go. So temporarily, and just for placement purposes, I'm actually going to slide the all the wires through just one of the holes. Move this forward from the back, kind of guide the wires through, and stick it, the ESC, to the back plate. There. I pulled the post out of the front. That actually released the front cab section. Remember, it would just roll forward. Now, with that hinge pin gone, I've uh, basically put the ESC in. It's just on some uh, sticky gum right now, just kind of staying in place while I figure out how to position it. Now, yes, you can see the ESC, but when it's positioned forward like that, you really can't. I could put it on the floor pan, but I'm, I'm not interested in doing that in case I get water that comes up to here, you know me, uh, and I don't want to have it directly on the floor uh, to get wet. I will probably waterproof this. The more I think about it, the more I'll waterproof it, but not right now. I just want to start getting the build put together so it's at least functioning. Now, on the inside, 
Uh, you can see here that I have uh, the battery uh, cables. I'm gonna put a connection on those right now. Weird angle for camera, but at least you guys kind of get to see. That's why when I do the electrical, I usually do it off camera because it's just safer, <laughs> which I may do right now. Okay, soldering is complete. Everything's all taped up, reinforced, so if I do have to uh, take it apart, it's not going to pull apart. Uh, let's give you a wider view. There we are. We'll look at the bottom. We'll go ahead and connect this. Just tape that off, Flip it down, like so. So now it's connected, quick release. Now the only thing I'm really looking at is the length of these wires. Do they fit? Where will I put them? Let's go ahead and slide it through the designated uh, cut hole in the cab. And there we go. Lined up. Almost. Everything about this machine really has taken some extra time and dedication to put together, especially because the instructions uh, really have been so, well, not helpful. <laughs> the pictures certainly did help me put it together, uh, but it's definitely an advanced build. I love it though, everything about it. Don't those tires look fantastic? When I lift it up, see this whole backbone? Look at, when you lift it, it's all independent suspension. So each one of these drops down on that backbone. So when you look at it, they kind of curve in a little bit on these tires when you lift it. Now that's because I have the uh, suspension, uh, the actual coils, uh, it's under load, right? I've really kind of tightened them down so they got quite a bit of sponge to them. Sorry about all the clickety clack. That's what you get with an all metal vehicle. Okay, so move my second hand out of the way my helping hands. Now I was able to get all of the uh, ends in here. In fact, I think I'm gonna be able to stick a receiver to the back wall just like the ESC. That would be the smartest for me because then I can attach the ESC right away. Plus, I wanna get into something else, but let's just move this off to the side and I'll show you the controller I have chosen for this project. Here we are. Ugh. Aha! Everyone knows that I use Spectrum products. Now, I did get this from Horizon Hobby, and uh, I figured a project this special needed a special radio. Now, I have a few radios, but my DX8 is kind of wearing out. Overkill has been using it quite a bit. So I figured, why not use something else, like the DX18, woo! Uh, I actually haven't set this up yet. I just got it in the mail the other day uh, and I just thought I'd go over it briefly with you. Now, do I need an 18 channel receiver? This is normally used for the air. Lots of people use it for different things, but pilots mostly. Now, the one thing I like about this is the antenna. On my old Spectrum radios, rah, check it out. On my old Spectrum radios, uh, it had an antenna that kind of moved, and often I found it cracked if I wasn't very careful with it. Is it on? There we go. Throttle high. There we go. Thank you. There. Isn't that nice? So I haven't set it up yet, uh, but this is going to help me maneuver the capo. Now, you might be wondering that this itself is a little overdoing it. But I have to say with Overkill and all the other uh, 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 projects I have on the go, plus the capo, I definitely needed a new radio that could handle everything I threw at it. DX18 definitely has my back on that. And just naming the actual radio so I have the right model set up. Capo Tatra 8x8. Okay, we'll get you in nice and close. I'm just gonna use a bit of double-sided tape to uh, actually stick this receiver in there. Hopefully I do this right the first time. Take off the back. 
Now I have to make sure that it's close enough that I can distribute the uh, antenna properly. This, I'll probably replace this one, but it's the one that I got with the radio. Uh, and I could use the extra channels, but I just want to make sure that without having to use leads right now, these plug in properly. So I'll probably mount it right there, right on the back floor. It's still on an angle, like it comes up off the floor. This isn't a flat spot. It's on an angle at the side, kind of as a riser. And I'll plug this one into the throttle port. Okay, so I put the battery in. I got it all strapped in up top. Everything is cleaned up. I did a little bit of cleanup job on the wires. You can see on the inside here, uh, ESC located on the back. I have not mounted the on off switch yet. These wires here are the antenna. I have also now not mounted those in the cabin yet because I'm not finished, but I wanted to get these laid out. They're totally fine. Now, let's see if I can listen here. Okay, hey, now that I have power to the whole unit, I'm going to actually put in the uh, steering horns. Steering, shifting, and locking differential. That's what these three uh, servos are for. I thought it was dual steering in the beginning, but it is not. It is actually a shifting servo. So that's what I'm putting in now. And I'll tell you, it is no easy task on a detailed machine like this. Everything is so compact. Try to get those teeth on there. Come on. Slowly. Fit it in there. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Now if I can just properly get the steering horn. I'm not gonna tighten it up yet. I need to position it to see if it's right. I can always adjust it with the trim and sub trim, but I wanna be as close to center as possible. Don't come off. Two places to uh, screw it in, onto the steering assembly, and of course onto the servo horn itself. Uh, wrong one. Just gotta cinch it up. Looking good though, coming together. So in the final stages of the stock build, one of the things that you're asked to do is actually put on the spare tire. And, and I just thought I'd kind of point out the tires I put these on off of camera. Each one has 10 little tiny hand-turned nuts that you need to tighten up, which means 80 nuts that you'd have to undo to undo all of these tires. But the neat thing about that is the way that these bead locks have actually been uh, machined. You see the spare tire mount, the way it's kind of fitted with this round uh, hole here, they actually line up with the screws so when you put it on to fit. It does just that. So I'll take this driver, excuse the shoulder, and I might as well take this screw while I had my shoulder in your face. That's what she said, by the way. And I'll do it one more time. There we go. In goes the spare tire. Very nice. I like how Capo actually has their logo right in the middle really kind of sets the tone for the whole build there. Now I'll just put in this final screw. Now there we go. You'll see here, this is an aluminum fuel tank. I put this on completely, it's not a, it's just for looks. It's like not a storage container, just for scale looks. And I think it looks beautiful. All right, spare tire is mounted up and time to take these uh, windows. These are a special type of window. Check this out, nice and clear, clean, uh, like uh, peeled off both sides. Put that in there, look at this, slides back and forth. Better part yet, this whole triangle piece here. Look at this, two, two of them. Looks kind of foggy when you first get it out of the package, hey? Eh? No problem, take it, just kind of start peeling it back like that. Try not to scratch any of the uh, actual plastic itself on the window. Take it, pop it in. Now you have a dual, I'm probably, let's see if I do this right, a dual sliding window on either side. Have to fix up the mirror there, not a big deal. Look at that. 
This is a unique concept. Okay, so I'm gonna put in the other side. This is an exciting time for me. I'm actually quite close to the end of the stock build here. Let's see if I can put this back on properly here. Uh-huh, like that. Get this lining up right. Right there. Start doing that up. Six screws before that roof is completely assembled on top. There we are. Beautiful. So this build has actually been very challenging. Uh, it's a beautiful build. I can say that it's probably one of the most unique builds I've done so far. It's been an honor for me to build this uh, Capo 8x8. Uh, everything about this, some parts didn't fit for me. I do have the very first one that was put into production, uh, and so it's a bit of a prototype. So I did have the odd uh, questionable thing happen to me here and there, or the odd uh, hole not lining up properly. But all in all, for an advanced builder, and I guess I'm kind of getting to that stage, intermediate, advanced, uh, I could say that this project was fantastic. Now, I never talk about pricing uh, because prices change all the time. I know that Capo hasn't really gotten into the uh, Western side of the advertising yet or distribution. I'm not part of the company. I'm just somebody who got to build a very cool vehicle. So I think uh, for the final stages, why don't we just plug in the battery and see where we go from there? All right, so I've actually lifted the truck up so it's not on the bench. All my Gen Zace battery boxes gives me a chance to elevate the truck a little bit. I have it all powered on and the DX18 is ready to roll. Are you guys ready to see the capo roll the first time? Let's check it out. Let's see if it has the steering. Nice, looking good. I like the uh, dual steer in the front. Again, I'll have to play with the end points. I haven't done that yet, uh, where the start and the end is. That's pretty good though. Let's try out, uh, let's try out speed, shall we? Forward. Okay, unlocked diffs. Look at this, unlocked. Okay, let's see if I lock them up. There we go. So that is the difference. So I can go from locked to unlocked using that whole arm assembly on the uh, vehicle itself. Remember when we built that? That was on the inside of the frame with the locking and unlocking diffs. Unlocked. Locked. That gives you ultimate traction. Two-stage transmission. Up and down, here. Watch this. Uh-huh. Locked, low, high. That, my friends, is my stock Capo CD15821 Extreme Off-Road Military Vehicle. Now, I want to put an FPV system in this.